Hello everyone, this is Harika. Welcome back to my channel. So first of all, I wish you all a very happy new year. And in this video, I will demonstrate document understanding framework. So if you or someone who have done few use cases around document understanding, definitely you would really feel the importance of framework for document understanding. Because for almost all kind of the use cases, we use uh, a most common template where the extractors and the classifiers only would differ. So I feel definitely there is a significant use for this framework with all the best practices also being placed. So first, before making you understand how this framework looks and what how it actually works, first I will help you to uh, how to get this framework into your studio. So first of all, you can go to RPA framework for document understanding. You can search it off and then you can find in the forum page then just go to this page and you can download this nugget package. So once after you download this, just come back to your studio and go to the settings. So here you have to place the path where you have downloaded the template into. Once after you've done that, go to the templates and you can find this document understanding framework template. So here you are. So once after you do that, you can create a project on it. So I have done this thing. And now, first, if you just observe, just like our RE framework, we here have multiple XAMLs inside our framework, and we have two main XAML files. One is with attended and another one with action center. So if you have already watched the document understanding playlist, you're very much familiar with attended, which is present validation station being involved in the process and the action center as well. So if you're not uh, clear with these both things, I would help you. So just go to my channel. And in my channel, you can go to the playlist where you can find uh, five videos in the document understanding playlist. So here in this playlist, you can go through all the videos which will help you to get very clear understanding on what is document understanding, present validation station, how you can use it on different types of extractors and classifiers and action center storage buckets. So you can get very clear understanding of all these things. So once after you get the understanding on the on those things, so it will be very clear and easy for you to get an understanding on this framework. So Let's get into this and try to understand each part of this framework very clearly and so that we can do a use case on it and process our documents very easily by using this framework. So first of all, we have read config file. So if you or someone who are familiar with RE framework already, so this will be a piece of cake for you. So we have read config file where we are passing the parameters obviously from the config file. So if you just observe here, we have, I've already opened the config file here. So if you see, we have download folder, split folder, exports, receipts, training folder, invoice training folder. And so we have seen in our previous videos where we have action center involved. So there we have to provide action folder path, storage bucket name and all these things. So those things we will be providing it directly from the config file. So we have endpoints for UiPath OCR endpoint, receipt endpoint, and invoices endpoint. So if you have watched my ML extractor videos, which is in the document understanding, so you can clearly understand what are these endpoints actually are. So this will be uh, helpful to extract for the uh, information when we are using the ML extractors. So these are, if you, if you just go through the description also, it will be very much clear for you. So download folder is something when we are using buckets, we need to provide the download folder and split folder, export folder. These are the different types of folders which will come into picture when we are processing and, you know, getting the output from this uh, after we export the results. So apart from that, in the constants, we have maximum execution attempts. So which is given as three maximum number of execution attempts for a process step, minimum value is one. And the retry interval, so we are giving five seconds as the retry interval and classification action title, validation action title. So whenever we are um, using classific classifiers and the validation, uh, we have to provide some title. And these are all the constant values that we are providing here. 
and we have in the assets we have api key so definitely when we are using the extractors we are providing this api key uh, which we will be getting it from the orchestrator so that we would be providing it here so if you are not familiar how to use assets and how to use uh, extract the information from the config file definitely you will get a very clear understanding please watch the re framework playlist so once after we're done with that so these are the input parameter arguments that we're giving here and just get into this and see whatever we have here so this is just like re framework we are reading the configuration files one by one with respect to the sheet name passing through it and here we are providing the maximum we are reading the maximum attempt and the retry interval also from the config sheet so once we are done with read config so let's see what is the next one so it shows is this an if condition where we have when the process is run in attended mode with no input documents prompt the user for a document to be processed so when there is no input document it this prompt would be given to the user to to select one of the documents and after which we have validate document path so we are checking if the path is a valid or not otherwise we are throwing it a business exception and there comes our actual process so from here i believe you're all familiar with this process because this is a, a normal template process for the document understanding right from the loading taxonomy to exporting the results so let's see how we, uh, it all is done and what all we have to understand more clearly to go ahead with the use case so we are initializing the process as we all know first and the foremost is uh, loading the taxonomy so if you just observe i haven't uh, taken the taxonomy it is already there in the design panel by default so you can just uh, just click on it and you can load the taxonomy whatever the document you want it to process so here we already have uh, three things that are already loaded which is receipt invoice w9 form for the structure documents and certificate of filing which is for i believe this is for the regex extraction so that's how uh, it is already there and then we can load it or you know based on your requirement you can customize that taxonomy manager so once after we're done with that we are reading the assets from here so uh, I'm getting the assets value, which is an API, and I'm loading it into the config. So I'm passing that as an output variable. After which we have to digitize the document, whatever we've uh, loaded in the taxonomy that we have to digitize. So that document, I am doing the digitization by using the UiPath document OCR. So once after that part is done, the next one is classification. So if you're using the classify workflow. So uh, inside which I'm using intelligent keyword classifier. And so if you just observe here, we've been given a block where we can customize this part based on our requirement, because if you just observe here, it is given that. So based on that output, uh, that classification success flag, if it's true or false, based on that you can classify. So let's suppose if classification results dot any is true, then if, if uh, the document is being classified, then that document would be given to the, we will process the document. Otherwise we will validate and train the classifiers. So let's go and see what is there inside. So we have present classification station where we can classify the document and then we are training the documents. We have one more workflow. So the classification and classification training, especially the training part, we haven't uh, really implemented in our previous videos, which also we can see as a part of this framework, which is very much useful because suppose whenever sometimes when the document is not classified, uh, so at that time we can pull it up here and we can train the document uh, by by classifying it as a particular document. So that also we can see in this part. And then if it's true, let's suppose this classification success flag is true, then we are coming to the next step so that is okay here we are processing each document if you just observe here we have for each so we are processing each document at a time based on all the classification results that we have extracted 
So here we are following a process which is split and process documents. So it mentioned if it is needed, we can split the document. Otherwise, you can directly extract the documents. So we have seen this. We, uh, we are extracting the documents. So for which based on our type of the documents, let's suppose if it's a structured document and uh, if the, all the fields are aligned every time in all the documents uh, in the same way, then we can go either for regex or for the form based extractor based on our requirement. So here we have regex extractor and then we have, uh, let's suppose if you wanted to extract the um, handwritten information, then you can go for intelligent form based extractor. And if it is something like, uh, um, let's say receipts or invoice where the common information but the data is unstructured like uh, uh, let's say uh, different uh, receipts from different companies or different restaurants or different hotels so in that case you can go for a uh, predefined already pre-trained ml extractors which are um, uh, receipts ml extractor and invoice for invoices by using the ml extractor so you can use these two things so if you just observe we have the api key which is pulled out from the asset so those things we are using here and also we have seen the uh, endpoints that are mentioned in the config so from here we can use the endpoints from here so these are the things that we can provide it by loading the config file and after which uh, based on the output again we can customize this based on our requirement and let's see what is here after the extraction so after the extraction we are giving if the extraction is successful then we are going to export the results we know that the results whatever we are extracted that comes in a form of data set so those things we have to convert it we have to export the results correct so so we have to convert this results into data set so whatever the extraction results that are coming up we're converting that into data set and then we are using we are writing it into an excel by using each table at a time and let's suppose if the data is not extracted properly then also we can train them so let's look here we can train the data this part also we can see we have present validation station correct this is attend automation attended automation so where we can uh, check uh, if the present validation station would show up the results uh, when the process is running so at that time we can validate if it's uh, if the whatever the results that are extracted by the robot is correct or not we can validate them and we can continue the process so that's how we have the present validation station here and also we have a trainers so let's see this so we haven't uh, involved trainers in our previous playlist but now we have an opportunity to work from here so let's uh, take a use case on it and also observe how this actually works and how this uh, how we can train a document uh, so that it will be better improving its uh, performance so we have trainers extraction scope also here and after which we are giving the extracted results into a particular variable and then we are passing it over here so once after this process is done we have seen how we are exporting this so and in the end process we can do whatever the cleanup process we want we can customize this part so that's how we can do with respect to the attended automation. But what is the process that is involved with respect to the action center? So in our videos, we have already seen earlier where action center is involved. So I believe the whole process would be the same, but instead of being uh, as it being the unattended process, so which is action center is involved. So I believe there would be a major um, change with respect to the process at this point. So once after we extract the results, whatever the results we are extracting. So in this case, we are processing it into a validation station. But as this being an unattended automation, we would not pass it through the validation station, but instead we will take it to the action center. So let's see how we can do that. So here, if you observe, we have validate and the train extractors. So here we have validation station. Um, uh, sorry, validate action. So we have action center here. We are create document data action. 
so we are taking it into the action center and like in the previous videos we have seen like how we can take it to the action center and how we can assign the particular task from there and how we can finish the task so we have that part here and also we can download the documents from the storage bucket so that's why we are giving it the bucket name and the bucket directory so that's how we can wait uh, until that particular action is done and then we can resume the process so that's how we are doing it here. Similarly, we have extractor trainers. So this would be the same. So it, what is the major difference that I've observed with respect to the attended and action center is the only thing. Uh, we have present validation station in the attended and here we have the action center to perform the task. So we can publish this particular process to action, uh, orchestrator and we can perform it from there. So apart from that, everything uh, for these both processes seems to be same. So I believe uh, for me, as I have done uh, a few use cases on document understanding. So this framework, I believe this is very much useful. Uh, so I could also see there's one more example here. So which is used to abort the process when the process aborted due to an exception. So this is a smooth flow where we can abort the process whenever there's an exception. So I believe uh, this framework will definitely help us and uh, make to extract the documents the information from the documents whether it's being structured or unstructured we have seen there are hybrid extractors and hybrid classifiers so i believe this will be ex uh, uh, a good uh, extension for the document understanding so let's uh, in the next videos i believe we can uh, take few use cases like few documents for as you can see we have multiple extractors here so let's take one from each of them uh, and then process it and see how this actually works so as far as i believe this is a very good extension for document understanding and i believe you got a clear understanding of what this framework is and what are the best practices that we have involved in this process so i hope you find this video useful so in the next videos please uh, uh, check it out all the uh, videos that are required to make a clear understanding about this framework and in the next videos i would come up with the use cases that we will use all the extractors which are already given and that way i believe that will give you a good understanding of this framework so thank you so much for watching stay tuned to my channel for more videos thank you